basically just means your options are loud or louder-ish sounding different. Hello, fine people on the interwebs. It's your favorite garage dwelling Sarah here with another car review. And today I have a 2021 Ford Mustang Mach 1. And this one is in the color Grabber Yellow, which I think is absolutely gorgeous because I love yellow cars to begin with. And it's in person, it's kind of a lighter yellow, not like zinc yellow on the Terminator Cobras. I know a lot of people hated that color. I actually kind of like it, but it has a little bit more of a a lemon zest to it. It's a little bit more almost neon. And speaking of colors, the color palette that they offer for the Mach 1, it's on point. There's all kinds of bright colors in there. Kind of like how you would have back in the 1970s with the 71 Mach 1. There was all kinds of bright colors available for that car. Although that had a 429 Super Cobra jet in it. And this has got a five liter Coyote. The S550 in itself is a lot less throwbacky than prior generations of the Mustang. But this grill right here, kind of nailed it. I love how the top half of the circle is cut off and there's gloss black and satin black contrasting accents, plus this metallic mattified gray that you have on the Mustang and on this bottom lip. There's a lot of nice colors on this car, especially the accent stripe that you get on the Mach 1 package. You can see it's gloss black and satin black with this little white ring that goes around it. I don't know why, but I can't help but think S14 Sylvia when I see these little amber bumper lights down below. All Mach 1s come standard with six pot monoblock Brembo front calipers that are finished in satin black with red font. It's actually a pretty looking Brembo. It has 19 inch gloss gunmetal wheels wrapped in a 255 40 19 inch Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tire. But in the rear, you only have a two pot caliper. It's non Brembo also. It's FOMOCO. Also, the wheels are staggered out back. You have a 275 40 19 inch tire. It's nice and chunky and meaty looking too. They made the proportion just right so it's not too stretched looking. Absolutely in love with that Mach 1 logo and that 70s font though. Really sets off the side of the car. Are you satin metallic black or just raw black plastic? It's really tough to tell. Personally, I think these fastbacks look better with the more aggressive optional rear wing, but I almost think that the Mach 1 would look good just wingless, especially in this color. I don't know, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Okay, interior. Yep, it's pretty much a GT inside there. Not a lot different. I do like this right here though, the sill plates with the illuminating Mach 1 on there. It's almost more of a, an 80s, like a late 80s look. I know production costs would be through the roof to do this, but I wish the stitch on the doors and the interior matched the exterior color like it did on the bullet, because this would look so good with a light yellow stitch. Ooh, magic. We're outside, just like that. I'm gonna get straight to the point, make this quick. I'm gonna tell you what's different about this in your regular Mustang GT. And uh, we're gonna get straight to driving this thing and nerding out in the garage and going over the tech specs and putting this thing up on the lift. The interior, what separates it from a GT, it does have this little plaque on the dash that says Mach 1 has your chassis number because it's limited production. And this also has the Elite package for $1,300, adds a 12 speaker bangin' Olufsen sound system and it definitely sounds bangin'. Oh, getting into the back of this car is a treat. You can get this with the Caros. This one does not have them. I would definitely recommend them. So it won't ding it too hard on the bolstering, but it's a, uh, it's like sitting in a comfortable leather recliner. It's probably made for a bit larger of a human being than I am. My head is wedged between the plastic on the edge of the back of the roof and the rear brake light, I think. It's not a comfortable back seat. Yeah, they are ventilated, which is really nice because they're black leather. I'm thankful they have them today. Plastic, really Ford? This thing's almost 60 grand. Couldn't wrap that little chunk in vinyl at least. This is cute. The trunk popper button is an accurate description. The Mustang's interior as it is, isn't too bad looking. There are some little cheap plastics here and there. It bothers me on the door that the black plastics are two different tones of black. I like that's got a vacuum gauge in the center with your oil pressure. Meme avec des sacs goofballs perfectionists. We. Oui. I gotta grab Iron Man's face so I can get out of here. I like Ford's sync system now in modern Fords. It works well for the most part. The only thing I can really ding it on though is the graphics just look like it's straight out of Windows 2000. Luckily, I found a solution for this. If you go into here for your background, put it on night mode, change the background color, 
to that one. There, that doesn't look too bad, a little less windowsy. I like the gauges in the Mustang also. They're very configurable, the graphics are nice and they change, you go through the different drive modes, you can change the colors in them. Check that out, I made them match the color of the car. Love that. Overall, it's just a good looking gauge cluster. I like the fact that it's still got a rip it style e-brake and not one of those stupid electronic ones. It is now time to make loud noises. So if you go into the gauge cluster into exhaust mode, there's actually multiple settings for your exhaust ranging from quiet Normal. Sport. Sounds good. And track. Sport actually sounds pretty good on the inside. I think tracks allowed us though. In the name of science, it is now time to give it the beans. Because this is the 10-speed auto, I have a bunch of different options of things I can do. I could move this thing down into sport, or I could keep it into drive. I could use auto mode, or I could use manual mode. There's multiple drive modes you can go through. If you have it into drive, you have normal, and if you put it down to sport, then you have sport, put it back up into drive, you have sport plus, track, drag strip, and snow and wet. You don't have snow and wet in sport on the shifter. It gets a little confusing. I'm gonna keep mine in sport, drag race mode, and let this thing eat. Ready? Okay. grabs a gear that's fun that's a lot of fun not as fun as a six-speed manual though and it's not heavy it's not light it's just kind of there hello and welcome to garage science of sarah under the hood of this 2021 ford mustang mach 1 is a tango indigo dash victor charlie tango five liter naturally aspirated all aluminium v8 that produces 480 horsepower at 7,000 RPM and 420 pound-feet of torque at 4,600 RPM. I just realized that even the Coyote has plastic valve covers. Lots of plastic underneath here. I like that the strut bar has Mach 1 on it though. And also there's an optional handling package that will give you adjustable camber plates on top of your front struts for the Magna Ride. One could make the argument that the Mach 1 is basically just a re-stickered bullet with an available 10-speed auto, and they'd pretty much be right. The only thing that really sets us apart from a GT mechanically is the fact that it has a GT350 intake manifold and some oil coolers, and uh, that's what gives it the extra 20 horsepower. It is time for the braking test. I'm never ready for this. No one behind me? Here it goes. Ooh. Good brakes. I saw a chunk of asphalt going flying over the car. <laughs> Those are phenomenal brakes. A little bit of credit to the tires, but geez, I literally saw a little black kernel go <laughs> right over and it bounced off the hood. Hello, I'm back. It's now time for the best part of the video. Let's see what's underneath this Mach 1. Come on. Ooh, that's crazy. That's an actual purpose-built rear diffuser. It's not just for looks. It ties into a bracket right here on the rear subframe. That is so, no way, there's a diff cooler built into the diffuser. That is so sick. There's like little vents right here that go into the diff cooler fins. I don't know how many cars I've reviewed where the rear diffusers are just like a tacky gimmick for looks. They don't even function. This is like legit. It's just the tip. 
The active exhaust system only has one butterfly on this inner exhaust tip. Basically just means your options are loud or louder ish sounding different. You see right here on the Torsen LSD, this would normally be your drain plug, but it goes out to your oil cooler. And I guess that's a level sensor built into it as well, or a temp sensor possibly. And in case you weren't already aware, S550 chassis Mustangs have an integral link independent rear suspension. No longer live rear axle like previous gens. This thing has got a resonator big enough, they probably wouldn't even allow it as a carry-on, yet this thing's still super loud. Even though this is a unibody car, I like the fact that they include this little frame rail that's spot welded and bolted on underneath the center of the car. It's on either side. And also, because this thing's grabber yellow, the overspray makes the underside look greenish. That's fun. And there you go. In case you've never seen the underside of a S550, especially a 2021 Mustang Mach 1, that's what it looks like under here. You can see the transmission pan for that 10 speed is massive. It's plastic. Plastic baffles. Plastic. That baffles me. <laughs> well, you can get this with the Getrag MT82 six speed manual transmission with auto rev match downshifting. This one is equipped with the 10R80 10 speed automatic transmission that was jointly developed between Ford and General Motors. And for the Mach 1, this one has an additional oil cooler as well as a different TCU tune on the transmission. That's interesting. Scrap if dropped. Weird Easter egg to find in there. Well, would you look at that? Dual ball joints, again on the knuckle, actually triple if you count the tie rod end. It's a dual ball joint McPherson style front end. Somewhere in the world, there's a human being that graduated with a degree in engineering and came up with holes. Holes that have little baffles in them that look like something a crab made on a beach. And just like the rear diffuser, this front splitter is fairly functional as well. You can see there's an inlet over here. It directs air at your brakes. Oh, weird. There's the little thing that Poops out light holograms. Bit of a shakedown run. <laughs> that sounds so good. So the elephant in the room, I think, is going to be this 10R80. The fact that you can get a six-speed manual in this car is just... Like, I couldn't have it any other way. And I don't want it to sound like I'm bashing this transmission because this is a phenomenal 10 speed. I love this transmission. I personally feel it was best paired when I reviewed the Ford Ranger with the 23 Ego Boost. The combination of this gearbox and that engine together was my favorite. But in here, I like the fact that I can drop multiple gears at once. And for the Mach 1, it does have a revision to the TCU, upgraded torque converter, as well as an additional oil cooler. I just want to shut up and make loud noises. But it does suck some of the fun out of this car, having the 10 speed auto. And I don't really ever want to use the paddle shifters either because I feel, A, I'm an idiot compared to the TCU in this car. So whenever I go to use the paddle shifters, I'm not really helping the car, nor am I making it any faster. It's better just let the transmission do its thing on its own. It's, it's smart how it really is. I mean, it's as good at keeping you in that power band as a CVT except you won't hate your life for owning something with a CVT. <laughs> the Magna ride in this car is fantastic. This doesn't even have the handling pack on it either. You can feel it squirming around a little bit. I can see where a wider wheel and tire would help. This thing feels less Mustangy <laughs> with an automatic. It's less likely to get sideways and do squirrely things on you, even with the traction control turned off. It's just, it's more poised and refined, I think, with the 10 speed auto. And that's not what I want in a car that looks and sounds like this. I just want something that will do ignorant shit all the time. And it's way more fun to do that when you have a clutch pedal. It's a definite road tripper car though. It's super comfy to cruise around in and these ventilated seats are an absolute blessing right now because it's super humid out for Arizona. I 
know someone that's in like Alabama or Florida right now. I'm like, you don't know what humid is, girl. <laughs> but it's humid for here right now. I'm gonna put it into a softer setting because this road's a little bumpy and I'm not about that right now. So let's go into normal mode. It is noticeable, but it's not, actually that is pretty noticeable when you put it into normal. It does get a lot softer. I think what makes this car really appeal to me even more now though, is knowing that we're facing the end of an era with cars like this. And I think the people that buy these cars are not going to regret it. I haven't smelt fresh, wet grass in so long, I don't even remember. It's green, finally. Anyway, if you guys have never seen one of my car reviews before, I have multiple categories to rate and assess them. Starting with the bean score, it is a rating of one to five beans based on feeling you get your gut, and you give it the beans. And the 21 Mustang Mach 1 with the 10 speed auto is getting a rating of two point Eight beans, that's nine beans. We'll give it an extra, 2.9 beans. Go figure, I'm gonna say the six speed manual version in the bullet I reviewed was more fun. It just is, the six speed makes this car more fun. It is a great transmission that's in here. You can't go wrong with the 10 speed auto, but fun factor, it's just not as much as the uh, six speed. Next is the cookie score, it is a rating of one to five cookies based on what you get for your money. And this car right here, because it is limited production, this is the end of the second muscle car era, and it does have some lineage to it. I'm gonna give it a rating of 4.6 cookies. I don't think you could go wrong with buying one of these things. I think they're gonna hold their value, and when the gasoline cars are no more and it's all electric cars, you're gonna wish you had one of these. Lastly is the Penguin score. It is a rating of one to five penguins based on how much I personally like a vehicle. And the Mach 1 is getting a rating of 4.1 Penguin. I like this car a lot, but I will say I would get it with the Recaros in the six speed, in this color. And uh, yeah, it's a great car. And there's not gonna be anything like this ever again. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this review and I will see you soon with another. Bye.